Hey everybody, it's Premier Gal here, and today I'm going to be showing you the difference between set to frame size and scale to frame size in Adobe Premiere Pro, and which one to use when working with images in your Premiere Pro timeline. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, you guys, so I'm inside of Premiere Pro here and I have a sequence here that I created that's a frame size of 1920 by 1080 pixels. And it's empty because I want to add this image to demonstrate um, scale to frame size and set to frame size for you, okay? So you'll notice that this image here of this beetle is 3000 pixels by 2400 pixels, which is bigger than 1920. Uh, by 1080. So if I drag this into the sequence here, you'll notice that part of the image is cropped out of the frame size, okay? So what you can do is you can either scale to frame size or set to frame size, and I'm gonna tell you which one is better for images inside of Premiere Pro, okay? So what you're going to do is right click here. If you scale to frame size, you'll see that the image is then reduced in size to fit within the frame. Now, if you go to the effects controls, this is where it gets kind of strange because you'll see that the scale is still a hundred, but didn't it just reduce it in size? It should be lower than a hundred. What Premiere Pro has done with scale to frame size is it's actually rasterized this image at the resolution of the sequence. So if you were gonna zoom in more, you would actually lose quality. And because with images in Premiere Pro, since we do the Ken Burns effect, where you sort of zoom in the pan and zoom effect, you don't want to scale to frame, right? So what I'm going to do instead is right click and select set to frame size. And now you will see that the scale is actually at 45, which is what you want. It's scaled down the image by reducing it in size, not rasterizing it, okay? So if I was gonna create a keyframe now to add motion, I don't have to be worried about losing resolution or pixelation as you zoom in. So if I create a keyframe at position and scale, and then over time I zoom in, let's say to 55, you won't have to worry about that pixelation. So you see it zooms in over time. And now that I know that it's set, to frame size, we are all good. And you can do this across all your images. Now, one last thing is you can create a keyboard shortcut for set to frame size so you don't have to right click every time and hit set to frame size. So the way that you do that is you go to Premiere Pro CC keyboard shortcuts. I believe if you're on a PC, you have to go up to file. But if you go to keyboard shortcuts and you type in set to frame size, you can double click here and create your own custom um, shortcut. I selected option S because that was easiest for me, but you can type in any shortcut that you want. So now going forward, if I ever wanted to set to frame size, I would just click on the clip and hit option S. And there we go, set to frame size. So I hope that you guys found this useful um, going forward with your editing. If you ever are wondering about the difference between scale to frame size and set to frame size with images, always use set to frame size, okay? So I hope that you guys found this useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. If you have any tutorial requests, go to premiergal.com slash tutorials and make your request there. I will see you guys next week. Bye. Today I'm going to be showing you Premiere Essentials by Rampant Design in Adobe Premiere Pro. It is a pack of 120 different presets that will really complement your production flow. 